But the emphasis of Isaiah is the emphasis of holiness. It's the most needed thing in the church of God today. Until the church is holy, there'll be no rapture. I don't care what theory you have of rapture. The Lord isn't coming for a lending old woman. He isn't coming for a bag woman. He's coming for a bride. regenerated by the Holy Spirit and He is within you. Many of you know Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 through 10. 10 is the key verse. It says, For we are saved by grace through faith, not of yourself, but is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, and ordained that we should walk in good works. And we understand that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead, being, being alone. Is your faith accompanied by good works? preaching the gospel, serving the poor. But we, we, we need to understand this, that we need to come with repentance, a broken and contrite spirit, Psalms 51, 17 says. It says, oh my God, a broken and contrite spirit you will not, do, you know, you, you will not despise. Not a lot of people have done that. They've just added Jesus to their life. They haven't repented. They haven't changed. They haven't radically transformed. Romans 11, 22 teaches us about the goodness and severity of God to those who fell severity, but to you goodness, if you continue in his goodness. See, you must continue, must endure to the end. Jesus said, he who overcomes shall inherit the kingdom of God. We have to overcome this world. We need to come out from among them. We need to go and sin no more. We need to, we need to, but we can't do this on our own. We need the spirit of Jesus Christ. I couldn't break my sin on my own. I kept falling to the flesh. But he who sows to the spirit of the spirit shall reap everlasting life. But he who sows to the spirit shall of the spirit shall reap everlasting life. But he sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap destruction. When you are living in the flesh, you're going to be destroyed. Sin brings destruction. Sin brings death. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. To all who believe, if you will profess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. But that's the key. You've got to believe. Even the demons believe in one God and they tremble. And they tremble. What is separating you from the devil, from the demons? It's those good works that are accompanied by the, the Spirit of God. The Bible says that the Spirit of God will come. In John chapter 8, He will testify of me. Do you have the Spirit of God living within you? Do you? you? Why would you? Why would you testify of Him? Why, why do we, we got to come out to a bed? Jesus, Jesus is up, but Jesus is also, our God is a consuming fire, the Bible says. He's a consuming fire who will not be quenched, but He can baptize you with fire, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for remission of sin. Remission of sin, man. This is what we're not hearing in the churches. We're not hearing going sin no more. We have too many Bible 1C3 churches. That's what the problem is. The government runs the churches now. If you're Bible 1C3, your church isn't run by Jesus Christ. You're run by the government. The government is the head. It's the government, then the church, then the pastor. It should be Jesus Christ, the head of the body. We're all grafted into one body. We're all grafted into one vine, which is Jesus Christ. That's all. Him and Him crucified. Who we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. See the perfection there. If you are in Christ, you will perfect you. You will hate sin. It says he purges our iniquity from us. He purges it from us. He shall see no more. When he says to the way to go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. No longer. If your hand offends you, cut it off. If your eye is offending you and causing you to sin to the point where you can't stop. Pluck it out. It'd be better for you to go into heaven and the heaven maimed than to go into hell a whole body. Don't you understand? The ra Jesus brought a radical message. A radical message of leave this world behind you. Remember lost wife. Lot loved Sodom. She wanted to turn back. She, she, you know, any man having put his hand to the plow and turn it back is not fit for the kingdom of God. And we see that. We see the world. They accept Jesus. They're on fire for God for a month, three months. That's it. And then they go right back to the world. Just as a, just as a dog returns back to his vomit, so does a fool go back to his folly. And that's what we see. And then we have an event like this where people get fired up for a week, two weeks, and then the fire will be gone. It'll be quenched again by the lust of the world. It says, love not the world. Neither are the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And these, these things of the world pass away. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. But he who abides in the Father shall abide forever. You can have eternal life. It's eternal life or eternal damnation. It's one or the other. 
There's no middle. The problem with the church today is it's lukewarm. Revelation 3.16 says, Because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. As Jesus Christ saying that, I will spew you out. You will not make it in being a lukewarm Christian. You need to be on fire. On fire for God. You can have that by the baptism of fire, which is the Holy Spirit. It says, I, I rebuke and chasten those who I love. Be zealous. Zeal. Have zeal for the Lord and repent. Repent. He ended it with repent, you know. We need to understand that our sin is not okay in the sight of God. And he gives us the power. It says, he who was born of God cannot commit sin because his seed remains in him. If Jesus Christ is living in you, how can you continue to walk in willful sin? Willfully. You plan it. You work iniquity. You love it. You enjoy it. Yes, sin is pleasurable for a season, but that season is fleeting. And sin and the sinner will be cast into hell. Love the sinner, hate the sin is, a, is Hindu. Mahatma Gandhi said that. Jesus Christ never said that. He said, I will throw a boat sinner. Do not fear the one who can kill the body and that do not want harm to you, but fear the one who can kill the body and then afterwards throw the soul into hell fire. That's what we should fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We need to, we, we need to fear the Lord. The, the, by fear of the Lord meant his heart for evil. It's goodness and severity. It's, a, it, it's mercy and truth. Jesus Christ is full of grace and truth. We understand what is truth. Truth is not always, you know, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. We understand these precepts and call precepts that the truth will set you free. And what is the truth? That sin separates you from God. It says your sins have hid his face from you, and your iniquities did turn his head away from you. So your sin is separating you from God. Even if you continue to profess Jesus, says, these people draw near to me with their lips, and with their mouths do they honor me, but their hearts are far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. Where is your fear taught towards God? God is love, but God is holy. He's true and just. He's a just judge. Everyone says, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, Judge not, lest you be not judged. When the Lord will judge what you use, it shall be judged back to you. But take the log out of your eye before you promote the speck from your brother's eye. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. Yes, God is great. Amen. Titus right chapter 2, verse 11. Says that the grace of God teaches us that we should no longer live right worldly. Amen. Well, it says, no, 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 no. It says, Where shall the ungodly and sinners be? Scarcely the righteous man be saved. First Peter chapter 4, verse 17 through 19 says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, but to begin at us, where shall the envy thereof of those who obey not the gospel of God? For if scarcely the righteous man be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? Don't you see that the righteous and the ungodly and sinner are separate? We're no longer sinners. We're translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. We're, we're saints. We're called saints. We're called the elect. When we go and sin no more, we're born again by the Holy Spirit. We're no longer sinners. We don't work iniquity. If you are, that's an issue. You have not been born again. You need to repent. Don't backslide. Thank you for saving me. 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 Thank and then he said not into the son of the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. He that believes not is condemned already, but he that believes is not condemned. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness because their deeds were evil. And no man comes to the light, to the dark, to the light lest their dark deeds be exposed. But he who loves the light comes that his, 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 his work may be manifested. Are, are you going to come to the light so that the Lord can expose your evil deeds? Or are your works going to be manifested and praised by the Lord Jesus Christ? What is it? Which one is it going to be? Are you going to be exposed by that, by that, that bright light? It says, Behold, he comes in flaming fire, reaping vengeance on those who know not God. You know Jesus Christ. It says, He who, who, who still lives in sin does not know me. He who still walks in darkness does not know me and is a liar, the scripture says. That's First John. It says that if you're continuing to walk in darkness, you don't have fellowship with light. Because what fellowship does darkness have with light? You can't abide with Jesus Christ and still live in the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness is the devil's lair, man. He's trying to get you to come back home. Come back. Come sin. You, you love your sin. But listen, Jesus Christ can set you free. You, I was in bondage. 
I was, I was a chain. I could not break my sin. I needed to cry out to God. That's what repentance is, is a cry out to God, seeking to forsake your sin. But you need to, you need, you need to understand that your heart, that's the key to your heart. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17 that the heart is desperately wicked above all else. Who can know it? And deceitful. But I am the Lord who tries to search the heart. He tries to reign before every man before he needs. In Revelation, Jesus says the same exact thing, that I am the Lord who searches the heart. It's not like a magic thing there. Don't search your heart. If you have profanities coming out of mouth, it says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Is your speech flavor and sweet under the Lord as honey? Or is it like salt water? Do you speak blessings and blasphemies all in the same sentence? Because that, you know, a phone cannot bring forth spring water and salt water. You see the issue there. You're a hypocrite. The Bible says that the hypocrite shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You profess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and say, yes, I am a follower of Christ. But, but I sin every day. I can't overcome sin. Here's the problem. We believe the Holy Ghost. We believe the Holy Spirit to, to, to help us uh, to get a job or have miracles happen in our lives or bless us. But we don't believe in the Holy Spirit. What are you sent for? To reprove the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. To live holy. That's the name. The Holy Spirit. If it's within you, shouldn't you be living holy? The Bible says that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. We need holiness. Repentance. This cannot come except any other way but Jesus Christ. Jesus said that I will come and I will send the helper, the comforter. That is the Holy Spirit. If you not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you cannot overcome your sin. You need that. You need to, you need to understand that you need to abide in Jesus Christ and Him alone. No, 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 no church can save you. No pastor can save you. No pope can save you. But that's the other issue, you know. When we come here today, why is the pope speaking here? Understand that the word Catholic means universal. He wants to unite everybody in love, in the name of love. Here's the issue. Revelation speaks about a one-world religion, a one-world government. We only can be united in love. But, they, but that's not love. It, it's a rebellion against God. The Bible says that in, in the book of Samuel, it says rebellion against God. It's witchcraft. Amen. Those who practice witchcraft, that's sorcery. And, they, and, then, and then Revelation says that they didn't rep repented not of their sorcery. Sorcery is also drug use. How many people out here condone marijuana use? God gave us all seed-bearing plants, right? That's right, but it says for food. You don't go and eat or smoke poison ivy. You don't do that because, it's, it's, you know, man perverts everything. He takes what is, what is beautiful and what is good and perverts it. But the, we're coming out here today, you guys are sheep, blinded, gone astray. But the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, is stretching his hand out, saying, Come back to my flock, because I am the door. If any man enters in there by me, he shall find green pasture. But anyone who goes in some other way is the same as a thief and a robber, and they shall be thrown out where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Hell's a real place. People, most are going to go there. It says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the way, and broad is the path that leads to destruction. But narrow is the way that leads to life. Narrow because there's one way, which is Jesus' way, and his word. He says that he who is ashamed of me and my words, and my words will I be ashamed of when he stands before me. You need to understand that every man does not live by bread alone, but out of, by the word of every mouth of God. Every, out of the mouth of God. We understand that we need to, we need to seek the Lord while he may yet be found. Because in the book of Amos, it talks about a famine will come upon the land. Not of food and not of water, but of the word of God. What happens when they come for your Bible? What happens when they no longer give you a Bible app? And you can't see the Lord and they hidden in your heart? David said, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I, that I may not sin against you, O Lord. Are you diligently searching the scriptures to see if it was so in the book of Acts? It says that the, 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 the people were counted righteous because they searched the scriptures daily to see if it was so. Do you just let your pastor shove what he wants down your throat and say, That's okay, yeah, amen. Or do you search it and see if it lines up with scripture? Because the churches nowadays are, are not preaching the whole message, the goodness and severity, repentance and faith. It's, it's a marriage, it's a, it's a beautiful balance, one with the other. Truth and justice, mercy and truth. God is a holy judge, he will judge everyone. There's a point for man to die once, and then after this comes the judgment. What are you going to do in that day? Who will you find refuge in? Is it Jesus Christ, the Jesus of the Bible? Or is it the ecumenical Jesus who loves everybody? Doesn't matter. Come as you are, leave as you were. It doesn't matter what you do. You can't be. You can never be good enough. But Jesus says, "I can. I can. I can change you. I can give you my spirit. I can. I can radically change you. Being born again. You know, it's not being physically rebirthed. It's regenerated of the Holy Spirit. You understand that we're born with a death sentence. We're all going to die because through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin. 
but by the man Jesus Christ, life enters, eternal life. He destroyed the works of the devil. The Son of Man was manifested that he may destroy the works of the devil. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. This should be disturbing. I should get a bunch of amens if everyone's serving Jesus Christ. It's just the Bible. That's all I'm preaching. It's the Word of God, the Word that became flesh. That's all. Jesus Christ was the Word that became flesh. That Word says that sinners end up in hell. The elect and the, those who are in Christ will end up in eternal life, entering through Christ. Simple as that. Two, two, two options here. The Bible says that blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. But the Lord has promised them to those, to those who love him. Let no man say that when he is tempted, he is tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, neither does he tempt any man. But every man is tempted, this is the key, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin when it is finished brings forth death. Do you understand that you're, when you start to lust after after money, after women, after men, whatever it may be, that, 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 that your lust is going to bring forth sin. And when you sin against God, it brings forth death. You, you, you deserve to die because God is holy and He is just. And, and if He just lets you in being a sinner, you know, what, what will, He's not justice. That's not just. That's not holiness. That's just being partiality. And the Bible says that partiality is a sin. And we understand that God cannot sin. He is perfect and just in all of his ways. And Jesus Christ was found with no sin. That's why he was a spotless peace offering. The Lord. Because he sin did not sin. He lived a perfect life. We understand that, you know, the Bible, the Bible talks about, you know, understanding that we need Christ. We need to understand that we need him more than he needs us. We're not coming out here to exalt him. We need him. This, this should be a repentance. This should not be a revival. Revival will not come. And so people are down on their knees crying out to the Lord. Seeking the Lord diligently in the scriptures. The scriptures, the word of God. The word will not return void. The Bible says that the word of God is living, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing even the soul and spirit. He joins the mouth and it is a and it is a discerner of the thoughts, of the heart. What are the thoughts of your heart? The word will, will pierce right through them. That's why people get angry when they hear the word of God, because it convicts their heart. It gets them all upset because it's speaking to their conscience. We have a God-given conscience. The Bible says that in the book of Hebrews that He will write His law upon our hearts. Upon our hearts. Is His law written upon your heart? Have you let Jesus come into you? Have you been reconciled back to God? We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all have. But we can be regenerated. How do we get into heaven? We repent. We go and sin no more by the power of Jesus Christ. Not by my own power. I, man cannot save himself. He needs a perfect Savior. Who is that perfect Savior? But none other. The name above all names, Jesus Christ. But Jesus is coming back as the Lion of the tribe of Judah to rage war on all those who know not God. It says the Bible. The Bible says that the nations and those who all forgot God shall be turned into hell. The wicked and all the nations that forgot God shall be turned into hell. If I, you know, Psalm 5, 5 says that you hate all workers of iniquity. Do you understand that if you're living in sin, you're working in iniquity, you're, you're currently under hatred of the Lord. That's why we warn you, because it's, it's not for everyone to get around and sing Kumbaya. You understand that if you were to die, then the, but, but the Lord is, is, is not slack as men count slackness, but does not want any to perish, but wants all to come to repentance. Not to ask him into his heart, but to come to repentance. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. This is, this is not Holy Spirit led. This is an event run by a man who, 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 who loves the Pope and the Catholic Church. The Pope, the Pope has said that he has, he has actually been quoted saying that having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ is dangerous. And this is a man who claims to be the mediator for God on earth. And he said that having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is dangerous. Wow. But you know why it is dangerous? Because it would blow up his agenda. That, that Jesus Christ can set you free in him alone. That he crucified and overcame death and overcame sin upon the cross. And rose on the third day that we may be set free to, to all who believe on him. But he, you know, if you're going to believe, you need to have that biblical belief. What belief do you have? you have the belief that, that works and has faith that works? Or, or do you have the, the, the demonic belief that, that even the demons believe and they tremble? Are you trembling? Are you trembling at the, at the Lord? Because we, we, understand we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. 
fear and trouble have standing that we are not worthy to stand before the Lord, that we need to be set free, delivered, and that if we continue in our sin, we're going straight to hell. One sin or a thousand sins. If we transgress the law of one, we're guilty of all the scripture teaches. What is that sin that you're working daily? If you're continuing to walk in sin daily, there is something wrong. The Bible says in number 32, verse 23, it says, And behold, your sin will find you all. There is nothing done that is in secret that will not be brought to the light. The light of Jesus Christ, you will stand before him naked and destitute. And he will look through you with his, his piercing eyes of flaming fire. And he will be as white as snow, and he will, he will be perfect and holy, and he will stand before you, and he will give an account for your life. And he will say to you, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. What is a worker of iniquity? Someone that practices willfully walks in sin. That's what a worker of iniquity is. We're no longer sinners. We were set free, delivered. We're saints. We're called the, elect, the election of Christ. Because he has his seed within us. Please repent, people. Repent, don't go in there. They're just promoting an ecumenical movement. Just Jesus. bringing oneness. Just oneness is what they want. Let's, let's get a one world government. Let's get rid of Jesus. Let's just call everything God. Everyone has their own God. Now, but here's the problem. Jesus, Jesus did not come to bring peace, the Bible says. He says Jesus came to bring a sword. To bring division in that. Well, a man's enemy can be those of his own no, house. Didn't. Scripture teaches that. That says, you will be hated. It says, the world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of its words of evil. Are you, and then the Holy Spirit says that He will come and He will testify of me. Are you testifying of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you testifying of Him? Are you testifying that the works of the, of the, the world are evil? Are you testifying that people need to repent and be set free? Or are you saying, I can't wait to hear that man tonight. You know, I just can't wait to, to lift up my, my hands for the night and then I can't wait to go home and practice the sin. No, I can't wait to go, go watch some pornography. I can't wait to go have sex with my girlfriend who I'm not married to yet. I can't wait for that. That's, that's sin. You're working iniquity. You're still living in willful sin. You need to repent. You need to, you need to stop that. But you can't. You, you need Jesus Christ. That's the simple. Is that the real Jesus? The scriptural Jesus? If you cry to him, you will find him. If you search him, you will find him, he says. If you seek me, you shall find me. But the Bible says that God does not hear the prayer of sinners. So, so when you pray, is he hearing your prayers? Are prayers being answered? Are you being chastised when you, when you fall? Are you being scourged? This says, all those who I love are rebuke and chase and be zealous, therefore, and repent. The serious people, it really is. Jesus Christ is love, we know that. But this we know, that if we love the Lord, we will keep his commandments. And this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and they're not grievous to us. But they're not burdensome to us. Because it says, come all you who, who, who are weary, and take my yoke upon you, for my burden is light. It says, come all who thirst and hunger for righteousness, for you shall be filled. And if you drink of this water, living water, out of your stomach should flow rivers of flowing water. Those flows, those, man, when I got set on fire for Christ, I couldn't help but preach the gospel. It says, woe to me if I preach not the gospel, because necessity is laid upon me. You know, the Apostle Paul is also the one who said, I die daily. I pick up my cross. We must pick up our cross and deny ourselves. What is denying ourselves? What is enduring? What is overcoming if we're still in sin? We've just added the name of Jesus to our life. That's all. He hasn't changed us. We don't believe that the Holy Spirit can do that, right? He couldn't make you holy. But, the, but the, the, everyone, everyone wants to do, go dance and, and have these, these parties and, and everything like that and just label Jesus on it. But that's not, that's not the gospel. The gospel is repent and believe. Repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. That's all. It's a simple gospel. But it doesn't itch your ears. The Bible says it's in the last days. They shall not stir sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they shall become themselves teachers according to their own lust. What are your lusts that you want to be itched with? That you're okay in your sin. That it, even though the Lord's convicting you by the Holy Spirit, this isn't right what I'm doing. What I'm doing is not right. It's not pleasing to God. But the pastor will tell you, it's okay. God overlooks it. It's no, it's no big deal. It's covered in the blood. You know, and that's right. It's covered in the blood of those who go and sin no more. It is no longer remembered. It's like, come let us reason together. Let your sins be red as scarlet. They shall be made as white as snow. And as far as the east is from the west, shall I cast them? And then if you continue to willfully sin and, and, and have tasted of the heavenly of the heavenly ghost and the, the holy ghost and the heavenly gift, and you fall back into sin and you fall away, and so you can't even be restored back to repentance. That's Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 through 6. You understand how serious sin is. Sin is so serious that it put Jesus Christ upon the cross. And then, you know, but the Bible says that fools make a mock of sin. That you mock at sin. Sin's not serious. I have power over it. No. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ within me. 
Christ within me? Is Christ living within you? If he was, you wouldn't be here. You'd be preaching the gospel, you'd be out somewhere else ministering. You wouldn't be spending your money to promote these, these, these one world Christians that everything is love and God is grace and John 3.16, that's it. But we have a whole Bible. We have a whole Bible that tells us about the goodness and severity of God. God is a man of war. He is, he's, he, he's, he's, what about Sodom and Gomorrah? He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. That wasn't very loving. Sending people to hell is not very loving. But it's because of God's character and who He is that He must do that. He's not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. Will you come to Him today in repentance and really search Him and not believe that you're just okay in your sin? Because you're not. Sin is deceitfully been blinded by the God of this world who is Satan. Look at the monument that is right there standing up. That's not Satan. Satan not, that's the altar of Baal. You're worshiping Satan. You know, he loves this. He, he loves it. He has you deceived. He loves that. You know, that the, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Are you wicked or are you, you, you righteous? Which one is it? Are you a sinner or are you a saint? Are you sanctified? Have you come out from among them? Have you no longer touched the unclean thing? Please, people, repent. Repent. Seek the Lord. The Pope's not going to... He's going to itch your ears. He, he, he wants to walk. He believes in Islam and, 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 and Christians believe in the same God. He says that a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is dangerous. He's dangerous. He's a heretic. And after the first and second admonition, he must mark them and cast them out. He needs to be cast out. Well, he, he, he's, he's given power by, the, by, by Satan and the nations of the world because the nations of the world belong to, the Lord, they belong to Satan. Sorry. When Jesus was tempted, he said, I will give you all the nations of the earth. I will give you all the power of them. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. So Satan runs, the, runs these governments. He runs all this stuff. And if you're warming to the world... You're, you're, you're falling into sin. You're, you're going to be deceived. The world will be burned away with fervent heat when the Lord returns and all the works thereof. You know, no greater foundation can a man lay but Jesus Christ. But it's up to you to build on it with, with stones and metals and precious stones. Or what do you do with hay and stubble which was burned up? God's going to judge our works with fire and it's going to come all purified just like the Word of God. Tried in the fire seven times and purified the fiery furnace. Do you have that faith that saves you, that saving faith, that faith that produces work, the salvation that produces work? How can you be saved and be silent? The Holy Spirit came to testify of Jesus Christ. If the Holy Spirit is within you, how come you're not testifying of Him? How come you don't understand that sin, you need to hate sin? You need to hate sin. You need to love God and hate sin and flee from it. Flee from the wrath that is to come. Just having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof the Bible talks about. People deny the power of God to live holy and righteous and overcome their sin. They deny that, but they look like Christians. They come to events like this. They go to church on Sunday. They might even wear a Jesus hat or shirt and tell one person about Jesus. But they have that form. They look like they look like the real deal, but they deny the power. I can't overcome sin. We can't live holy. We're all just sinners. That's a lie. You know, in the end time, some shall depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. These are seducing spirits, they seduce you, they tell you what you want to hear. You love what they're telling you. I feel good about myself. Sometimes the best message is a convicting message that makes you cry, that makes you tremble, that understands, Lord, I am not worthy of you, yet you call me into your kingdom. Lord, give me, give me, give me faith. Give me, give me repentance, Lord. Give me your spirit. Not, not make me feel better. Because emotions are driven by the heart. We know that the heart is desperately wicked, and deceitful above everything. We can't trust our heart. We need to trust the Lord Jesus Christ and His Spirit and truth. And His Word is truth. Thy Word is truth. Sanctify them with Thy truth. Thy Word is truth. Are you reading the Bible daily? Are you seeking the Lord? The Bible says that the Word of God was made in flesh. Jesus Christ, the Word of God. If you're reading the Word, you're seeking Jesus. Do you understand that? When you, when you get for the Word, you'll get revelation. You'll find out more about Jesus and understand who He really is. Not, not, not what you're coming here to do. Sing and and, and, and that these these contemporary Christian art that they look too much like the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It says you adulterers and adulteresses. Know you not that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whosoever there shall forth a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Enemies of God will not be will not be in the kingdom of heaven. It says that he's sharpening instruments of death. That's what the Bible says. Instruments of death to his enemies. God is going to wage war against his enemies. When he comes back in flaming fire, reaping vengeance on those who know not the Lord. What team will you be upon? Will you be with the Lord, being caught up with him forevermore? Or will you be slayed by the word that's not protruded from his mouth, which is the two-edged sword, which is the word of God? The word of God is a two-edged sword. Our, our, our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but spiritual. We understand we're in a spiritual war today. 
the Lord, the Lord wants to set you free. He set us out here. He's stretching out his arm. He wants to be your shepherd. He wants to come out and get that one lost sheep. He will leave the 99 and get that one lost sheep. But the issue is, is I see all these people, all these people will go down the straight path to get into an event. But they will not go down the straight path to get into heaven. They're on the broad path. The Bible says that many will be on there. And there are few that will find the way. Few. That should make you tremble and understand that if I'm in the masses and I'm in the majority, I'm most likely wrong. Jesus said that few there be that find it. Few there be that don't, don't teach doctrines of men as commandments of God. Who taught you what you know? Was it the Lord and His Spirit and the Bible? Or was it a man up on a, on a, on a, on a pedestal? A pastor? Or was it the Pope? Or was it something you saw on the internet? Or was it Jesus Christ and His Word? And His, his, his confirmed truth? Either repent. Repent is, is not, not a sinner's prayer. As Peter said in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, he said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Everyone keeps telling me I'm preaching to the choir. Why is this? Why this is the word of God, sir? Why is this anger in you? You should you should be happy about the word of God. What, I'm just preaching the Bible to you, sir. This is what the apostles did. It says, "Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, declare to my people their sin and the, the tribe of Judah their transgression." It says, "Go ye into the highway and byways. Compel them to come in that my house may be full." If nobody's compelling you to be in, come in. You know that that that's that alarming me. The, you know, the scripture also talks about the labors. You know, though the, 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 the harvest be plenteous, the laborers, there be few. There's few laborers. That's true, there's maybe there's maybe 20 of us all together throughout this event, and there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of you guys. Don't you understand? Scripture stands true. Scripture, the Bible. The Pope doesn't even believe in the Bible. They, they, they're Catholics. They believe in the catechism. Is your catechism, is, uh, let any man that brings another gospel, Paul said, be a curse. Let that man be a curse. I mean, he's not going to enter into the kingdom of God. He said, if any man add to my word, shall I add unto him the plagues that are written in this book? And if any man takes away from my word, shall I take his name and blot his name out of the book of life? A lot of the Bible versions today, the NIV, the non-inspired version, for instance, has missing 60-something thousand words, 30-something verses. It's missing the word of God. Man shall not live on bread alone, but by out of every word of God. But you understand that there's an attack on that. They're trying to take the word. Matthew chapter 17 verse 21 it says that these kind do not go out but by prayer and fasting. Now you can find that in the King James Version but you can't find that in the other Bibles because Satan does not want you to know how to defeat him. But God preserves his word. He will let you know his truth. We need to understand that we need to pray. We need to fast. We need to seek the Lord. We need to afflict ourselves. We need to be made low. It says, it says low and you humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. He shall lift you up. Not exalting, looking for praise of man. We don't want the praise of man. We want the praise of Jesus Christ, the Lord. When he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter in. Or will he say, depart from me, you wicked and slothful servant, whether it's outside, whether it's weeping and wailing and gnashing and teeth. Behold, outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and the whoremongers. And whosoever loves and makes a lie. Are you, li are you lying? Do you lie every day? You know, the Bible says that who is a liar? But he that denies Jesus is the Christ. He is antichrist, denying both the Father and the Son. You deny him when you are living in a lie. It says, under the pure, all things are pure, but under the defiled, under the defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess to know God, but by their works they deny him. Being abominable, disobedient, and to every good work, reprobate. Don't you understand that your works, you may profess to know the Lord, but your works are denying him. You're working iniquity. That's why Jesus said, depart from me, you who work iniquity. Because you're, not, you're, you're denying the Lord Jesus Christ, you're slaying him again. He died once for sin. That one man may be saved through Jesus Christ. Repent, people. This is serious. This is not a, all about just, just a, a revival and come around singing a couple songs and lifting the Lord's name up. It says that the, the sacrifice of the wicked is even an abomination of the Lord. That which is, which is you know, popular among man is an abomination of God. Luke chapter 17 says that that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination of the Lord. That's Luke chapter 17. This is esteemed. This is highly esteemed. People that aren't even Christians are coming here. And they're, 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 they're lifting up, you know, I like a band or, or whatever it may be. But it's an abomination of God. We need to understand, what does God want? What is God seeking? What does He want from my life? Did He tell you to come here? Did Jesus Christ tell you to come here? Because this is where He would be. Did He say that to you? 
you need to search your spirit because you can be of a different spirit. It says that the subtlety of the serpent that if they preach a different Jesus, they may receive a different spirit. You could have received a different spirit if you're not being preached the true Jesus. You need to search for yourself. You can't trust in man. Man's not going to save you. He's not going to teach you the truth. My faith can't save anybody else, neither can their faith save me. You need to understand and search Jesus for yourself and who he really is and what he's really about, which is repentance and faith. The truth. Not, 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 not the Pope, not, not ecumenical, not contemporary, not things of this world, or rather his kingdom, which is on heaven. Understanding that we, we, are, we are foreigners in this country, that we're looking for a heavenly country, and that we understand that we're strangers just sojourning. Hebrews chapter 11 talks about that, verse 13 through 16, it says that these who all died in the faith, understanding that they were just sojourning and trying to get through this world, fixing their eyes upon heaven, that God was not ashamed to be called their God. God, do you, is God ashamed to be called your God? Are you bringing, bringing honor and glory to His name? It says, let your light shine amongst men that they may see your good works and glorify your heaven, which is in glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Your Father in heaven, is He seeing your good works and being glorified, or is He seeing your sin and, and turning His face? Because God does not hear the prayers of sinners. It's in the Scriptures. That's in the Gospel of John. Please, please, forsake your sin. Forsaken and separated you from a perfect and holy God. Repent. 